you have this formally, this mathematical solution, which has a black hole and a white hole, and a wormhole connecting them. Is that information somehow imprinted in the Hawking radiation? When, when, when the black hole's gone, hundreds, thousands of physicists have spent 50 years trying to understand what actually happens. And the current consensus now is that the information comes out again. Tearing this radiation out of the vacuum of space. It's coming from the vacuum. It's showing us a glimpse of a deeper theory of space and time. It's an interesting question again. Um, so the, the idea, by the way, the Einstein-Rosen bridge, wormhole, that comes from a paper in the mid-1930s from Einstein and Rosen. And it's a, it's a property of the space-time, um, which a man called Carl Schwarzschild discovered, actually, way back in 1916. Um, and it's uh, if you have an eternal black hole, an eternal universe, so a black hole that's always existed. Then you have this formally, this mathematical solution, mm -hmm. which is a black hole and a white hole and a wormhole connecting them. Um, it turns out you can't go through it because of the way the wormhole evolves as you fall in. Um, and so, but, but you can imagine those geometries, those so-called wormhole geometries in relativity. Now you need, in order to construct stable ones that you could travel through, you need forms of energy or matter that we don't think exist in the universe. So if it, it, you can read this. It's a great book, actually, from a long time ago by Kip Thorne on this called, um, I think it's called Black Holes, Warp, Time Warps and Time Machines or something like that. I can't, it's a great book by Kip. And uh, and in there, you'll see a discussion. And so it, the, the, the guess, it's not been proved, right, beyond doubt, but the guess is that it is nature will not, produce stable wormholes that you can travel through as, a, as an astronaut or with a spaceship or so on. So, so that's where we are at the moment. There are good reasons for thinking that whilst they can exist theoretically, then stable ones that you could go through will not exist. But it's not been proved conclusively from first principles. I should say that there are different kinds of wormholes. So there's a, in the study of black holes at the moment, um, the really cutting edge study of black holes. There is some kind of suggestion that a sort of wormhole might be present uh, and might play a role in solving something called the black hole information paradox. Um, so there's an idea that you can kind of, and I keep using these caveats because they're not, it's complicated, but you can sort of imagine the singularity in the black holes and networking. Remember one of your uh, lecture about the information paradox uh, that we can burn the book and the atoms left and then we can reconnect atoms to recreate the books so yeah. it it means that from the theoretical uh, point of view we can uh, back to the historical situation or to the human being we can reply the human being theoretically it, this is all kind of a very much what you call an in principle discussion. So, so that so it is true that uh, as far as we can tell, it, all the laws of nature, information is conserved, and what that means is it's not destroyed. So, what it means is that indeed, as you said, you could burn a book now in front of you. As far as we understand the laws of nature, then in principle, you could set fire to a book, and you could you could burn it, and if you could perfectly collect everything the light and the heat and the atom everything that comes off the book all the photons all the bits of smoke the lot right and you could measure it all perfectly and in principle you could reconstruct the book so and obviously in practice you can't but in principle you can now the 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 big the wonderful argument triggered by Stephen Hawking's work initially in the 1970s about black holes is is that true of a black hole so if you throw the book into a black hole, then is it? does the information somehow get stored? Does it ultimately get returned to the universe? Because black holes have a lifetime, we now know, so they, they ultimately evaporate away due to this process Stephen Hawking discovered called Hawking radiation. So ultimately the question is, is that information somehow imprinted in the Hawking radiation? 
when 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 the black hole's gone and all there is is this radiation that's been emitted from it and the, the initially the great paradox was that initially stephen hawking's calculation said no it isn't in the radiation the information is featureless information less so it meant that whatever goes in essentially gets completely not only completely scrambled up but erased that was the calculation right so uh, stephen hawking now we've spent by we i mean hundreds thousands of physicists have spent 50 years trying to understand what actually happens and the current consensus now um is that the information comes out again so ultimately in a very scrambled sense it is imprinted in the radiation and so then you get really interesting questions like well how because <laughs> because the radiation that comes first of all stephen hawking's calculation said it doesn't right so there's something wrong with the calculation and and secondly the way it's produced the the interesting thing about hawking radiation is that how does it you have to think just to step back a black hole in einstein's theory is described as pure space time right it's just space time geometry this radiation is coming from what's called the event horizon of the black hole which is just space so it's it's almost as if a way to think about it is the black hole is kind of shaking or, or tearing this radiation out of the vacuum of space it's coming from the vacuum it's not coming from the thing that fell in right mm -hmm. so the question is if something goes in and then all, and then this black hole disappears and all the radiation has come from something to do with the event horizon and the vacuum of space how can it be that this thing that fell in gets imprinted in it and that's where the recent calculations i mean very recent in the last few years have suggested the information comes out and then the way it comes out this is active research but as i mentioned earlier one picture which is very speculative is that some kind of wormholes some sort of wormholes not the einstein rosen bridges by the way some other kind kind of open up from the interior of the black hole to the exterior and somehow the the, the information comes out through wormholes but but that's very very a speculative interpretation of some difficult mathematics and there's no consensus on that it's very exciting because what, what it's doing what it's actually doing is it's showing us a glimpse of a deeper theory of space and time that that on, on that i think most most physicists agree but what we're glimpsing i don't think most physicists agree on do you believe that we will ever connect quantum physics and classical physics uh, yes uh, i i do i mean even even now you know the the there the are there are several questions in there uh, one is just how how quantum mechanics produces a, a world the world that we see which doesn't appear to us to have quantum like properties like uh, you know things can't be in several places at once for example um and uh, we're beginning i think to get a good understanding of that um i, I think the consensus would be that the, the world is described at its base level by quantum theory another question which we're also making progress on is um th th there's an idea called the holographic principle which is um r related to um the idea that you can represent space and time themselves uh, as a as a quantum theory an entangled quantum theory um it goes but if you want to look things up on the web there's uh, something called ads cft which is very famous um conjecture theory theorem uh di discovered by a physicist called juan maldacena a long time ago um, and so, so there there are windows, I think, into this this possibility that, and and I I think most physicists in the area would would agree with it. The base level of reality looks to me and virtually everybody else as a, like quantum mechanics, a quantum theory of some description. Uh, and out of that, the challenge is to decide, and we don't know how this works yet, as you said, to decide exactly how the reality that we perceive emerges from the deeper theory but i'd be surprised there are very few people now i think who think that the deep theory is not quantum mechanics it's it's interesting that the study of the very very precise questions in the study of black holes have led to 
are leading us down these interesting paths. That's one example. So the the the, the reason black holes are interesting. It, there's lots of reasons they're interesting things, but one of them is you can pose very simple questions about how information behaves. It's quantum information. Uh, thing, questions about quantum entanglement, which we can also study. Of course, we're studying in laboratories around the world. So we're building quantum computers, which are also giving us a deeper insight into this, this theory and how it behaves in practice. Um, so so I, think, I think we're on the verge of a real leap in our understanding of, of, of what quantum theory is and what it implies for the way that the world works. And quantum computer is a great example. I mean, these are these are real things. They're physical things that do think we can program them to do useful things. You can go on the web and use a quantum computer as a subroutine in your computer program. But those things are operating purely according to the laws of quantum mechanics. And, and these ideas about, for example, quantum entanglement, which have been, you know, if you go back a few decades, were purely theoretical are now experimental and they're not only experimental it's engineering now because we're doing we're building systems quantum computers that rely on it to work 